Welcome to the Mixercist. Hey, EB, how you doing? Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. We are doing a live stream, and it uh, took us a while to get going here, but uh, hopefully it's all pretty cool now. What well, have you been up to, to there? Why don't oh. we get, I was, gonna, I was just going to introduce the topic for those who may be joining. We're going to talk about AI tonight, AI in music specifically. And then probably more broadly, but we thought it would be fun rather than doing a plug-in review today. We thought we would talk about something that concerns us in the industry, but um, you know we haven't really spoken a lot about. So, as, in terms of what I've been up to, let's see. I saw a good movie. It was uh, you, was it You'll Never Find Me? Was that the one? That was yeah, on Shutter. So. Yeah, if you guys get Shutter, you should check out You'll Never Find Me. It's one of those movies where the ratings are like mm, not really scary enough or like it's too slow in the beginning, but it's one it's one of those movies where it starts out and you think, oh, this is going to go badly. And then as the plot progresses, you think, oh no, everything's fine. This is, this is going to be good. And then you're like, that's, well, that's stupid. Why would, why would they make a movie, a suspense movie where everything goes okay? And you realize this has to go badly and it does go badly. And when it goes badly, it's great. So look at all the awards this thing won. It was uh, it is a good ride. Probably one of the better things that's been on Shutter in a little while, to be honest with you. And so, if you get Shutter, check this out. Yeah, it's a one. It's it's like a great play, right? Because it's one set piece. It's inside this guy's trailer. There's no other, you know. There's no other scenes. There's no nothing. So I, was, I really enjoyed it. Anyway, what about you, Eric? What have you been up to? What have you been watching lately? Uh, I went and I did some classics. I did oh, one. Yeah? Yeah, called the uh, Legend of Hell House. If you know what that is. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, let's yeah. go here and take a look. Sure. It's a uh, 1973 or four or something. Nice. <laughs> now on Blu-ray. <laughs> what did he do to make this house so evil? Murder, vampirism, cannibalism, drug addiction, alcoholism, sadism, mutilation. How did it end? If it had ended, we would not be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's intense. It's a haunted house story. You yeah. know, when you, you spend the night and you get a million dollars or inherit right. the property, I think in this case, I don't, I don't know. Right. But it's yeah, cool. I just love it. Uh, it's a classic. I, I think the, you know, anybody who watched horror movies throughout the 70s and stuff probably knows this one. I didn't discover it until later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it is, it is really fun. It's got a cool twist at the end. Uh, and, and for the time, I think it's arguably a groundbreaking movie in the haunted house genre. Yeah, of course. And all uh, right. Yeah. Should we get into it? Cause I know I you've done a better. lot of research. Yeah. You've done a lot of research and a lot of stuff around AI for music. So even a couple of years ago, there was the notion that, you know, you could get AI to generate chord sequences for you, or maybe even generate a progression and a melody. But now we're at this stage where, you know, is put it to this way, a buddy of mine showed me something like a video of somebody using one of the AI tools for music production. And he's like, we're fucked. Like it's over. It's done. There's no point in writing music, recording music, learning how to use a microphone. None of that stuff matters anymore. Listen to this. So it's obviously picked up pace very, very quickly. My last experience with AI for music wasn't that great. Wasn't that impressive. But, you know, like plugins for mastering that did everything using AI started sneaking in a couple of years ago. In the beginning, it was like, oh, this will never work. And then it was like, well, it's not bad. And now it's like, uh oh. So what are you finding, EB? What's been, what's been your, um, the past couple of weeks, you've been looking at all these tools, trying them out, putting them through the paces. What's the result been? I think for me, I started off with, with the AI plugins that do like um, audio processing, not generative AI, just like I wanted a virtual yeah. guitar amp. So mm -hmm. I got Tonex, I bought the Tonex pedal, 
and I was kind of blown away by the sound. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a plug-in and a pedal, and they're inter interchangeable. So my idea was I'd get the tones in the Tone X, mm -hmm. and then uh, load it into the pedal to play live. Right. But what mm -hmm. impressed me the most was the sound. Right out of the bat, this is like sounding better than most of the guitar amp sim plugins that I have, if exactly. not all of them. Exactly. And AI is the way they did it. They trained it. It, it takes about five hours to train it in the high definition mode, mm -hmm. like, like the the most accurate one. And uh, after I got Tonex, I found this company Amalgam, and I think, he, I think he's out of Latvia. I'm not sure, but he's sampled so many amps, great amps, and they're the best wow. captures I think online of amps. There's there's just so many old Marshalls. Old Fenders, Boutique Amps, Heavy Metal Amps, just awesome right. stuff. And I th yeah. think I've got like 30 or 40 of them now. Wow. But amp, <laughs> amp, amp modeling is one thing. Really, what we're talking about is can we make music without any kind of human interaction? No human writers, no human performers, no real instruments, no human lyrics, no human performance, no human mixing or mastering. It's all done robotically. And so where are we at with that in your opinion? I, I think we're, it's sounding a lot better than it did last year or even like six months ago. Right. And to get right. you an example here, Suno, I think is probably the best right now. Mm -hmm. Sounding the most like music. So if you go to suno.ai, you can play around with it. You can make a song about the moon. In the darkest sky, a shining light, a mystical presence ignites the moon. So you Let's didn't have to pick Sunday night. <laughs> Everything's AI gener generated. Yeah. The lyrics too. Darkness falls, emotions overflow. Wait, oh man. Anxiety creeps in, it's hard to ignore. That's Wait, sick. Let's do this one. Yeah, I mm -hmm. was strolling through the brand the other day. Came across oh. David Goggins and I couldn't look away. His words hit me like a freight train in my brain. Now I'm running like a madman. I can't be tamed. Who's gonna carry the boats? Who's gonna like my, my son is super into country. And he likes that Morgan Wallen guy. And that sounds pretty much really, right? like the same thing. Well, they may have actually sampled his voice without his permission, yeah. which we'll, we'll get to. Powerhouses of light shine so bright. Oh, yeah. So, if you were to go back and retry or refresh and try one of these again, would you get a different song? In the darkest sky. Good question. Not yet. Reload. Let's do that moon one again. Sure. In the darkest sky. Nope. Although, right, so when I was playing around with it, because what you, you do is you make a song, mm -hmm. click that. Let's go. Metal song. Let's sing uh, with lyrics. Welcome to the Mixer System. Yeah, we'll create. Oh, and it wants me to log in, which I will do with the Discord or Google or. This is live. And on <laughs> if you're wondering why you can you can tell this is live. Stoogie. Yeah. Yeah. But, a little bit. A little bit rough around the edges. We haven't done a live stream since Halloween of last year. No, I think. we should we should practice up on it. This is a valuable tool because the posts on these things just murder. Let's go and listen to. 
exactly what happened at Suno AI when I said, welcome to the mixer Sist, make a metal song. And then I said, yep. make a death metal song and a hardcore metal song, which I think is this one right now. Welcome to the Mixer-Sist, prepare to die. You cannot resist, no place to hide. In the chaos we thrive. So someone eyes. sampled James Hetfield, clearly. <laughs> or somebody. Or like, you know, Hetfield and 18,000 other singers and combine them into the ultimate. Here's uh, the first message. one. I just I like uh, this looking one. at the chat. We're just looking at the chat here. We got Paul Crampton saying, amazing work, guys. Thank you very much. Oops, I responded as the wrong person. My bad. So if you see Badass Agile, that's me. Uh, but thanks awesome. for tuning in. If you're out there, if you're out there, let us know you're out there. Let us know what you think. AI for music, good, bad, indifferent. Chime in your thoughts. Sorry, Eric, go ahead. Oh yeah. No, the first, the first thing I generated on Suno AI was that prompt, but I think I said a uh, new wave of British heavy metal song. And mm -hmm. we got this, which could be like a Power Rangers soundtrack or something. Sweet. Did he say raise your fist, scream a lot? <laughs> Sorry? Was that the lyric? Raise your fist, scream a lot? Raise your fist, scream a lot. And the AI came <laughs> up with everything, including oh, prepare to die. Yeah. Prepare Which to is die. like, okay, that we're keeping. But you, that we're keeping, yeah, for prepare sure. To die. But that was easy. That was easy. Yeah, it knows us. It was easy. And here's another, the death metal <laughs> one. Interesting. And you did all that for free without paying for a membership? I did. I did it all for free. Which I used up all my credits. Oh, okay. <laughs> But I got, I rendered like 10 songs that way. And these are full yeah, songs, it, like two, three minutes. No shit. Was, was, was that a Sumo? Uh, yeah, Sumo.ai. Yeah. Sumo, sorry. Which nice. I think they're, for generative songwriting, mm -hmm. I think that's top of the heap right now. And they just came out, okay. this is version three of their model. That's crazy. So let's talk about, let's go back to Jurassic Park for a moment. In that movie, there's a classic moment where the Jeff Goldblum character says, your scientists were so busy trying to find out if they could, they didn't stop to ask if they should. And so when you think about all the different stuff that's come out of technology in the past 20 to 30 years, there's been good and bad. Things like the desktop computer being more ubiquitous, good news, right? Being able to um, do documents without using an electric typewriter, thanks to Microsoft Word. Yeah, there, there it is. Your scientists are so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to ask, stop to think if they should. But then there were some inventions not so, not working out so well. Like social media, I think, is a giant failed experiment. It's ruined democracy. It's eliminated privacy. It has distracted us to the point where we, we can barely work. We can barely function. Like people are walking into telephone poles because they can't get their faces out of their smartphone. And then there's stuff like crypto and NFTs that were ballooned. There was so much hype around it, not to mention like the vaporware of the internet bubble in, in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. people, some people either lost their shirts or made out like bandits. And this seems to be one of those things where there's like a real prospector feel to it, like a gold rush feel where everyone's jumping in. And so I did some research on uh, answer the answer, the public.com on answer the public. I asked, what are the big searches around AI? And the top searches in both Canada and the U.S. were highly similar. The most popular searches are AI detector. That was the biggest, most commonly searched one. Oh. Right? Because people are trying to say, how can I tell if it's the stuff that I'm seeing and reading is fake? Like, did a real person even make this? And then the second most common was... Um, Oh, what was it now? A AI art. People wanted to know which AI tools generate artwork. Isn't that interesting? And I think that's probably 
a symptom of the fact that what's the most common use case for chat GPT? It's social media marketing, right? Mm. Creating, creating shorts, creating, um, like Instagram videos, reels, that kind of thing. And you want images to gloss it up, but who wants to go take a picture of a caveman when they're hard to find and you can just ask chat GPT to make one for you now. Right. Then the third, the third most common was AI stocks. So it's how can I use AI to help me with my social media? Good use case. And then the other one was how can I use social, how can I use AI rather to make money? So right off the bat, people are like, where should I invest? Is this going to, is this going to keep right. going up and up and up and up? So, so yeah, it's like it, your broker. It's, it's going to make all the decisions. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's going to make all the decisions, but I think AI stocks to me means like, which of these companies should I invest in? Should I invest in open, is it open AI? The name of the company? I can't remember. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one and that Microsoft that, basically has now. Is it? Sam Altman. And then they, yeah, yeah, if you yeah. remember yeah, all yeah. that uh, drama uh, months ago, yeah, yeah, that's but, uh, it. Sam that's Altman it. got kicked out, the board got rearranged, now he's back, but Microsoft was setting up a brand new mega, a mega, mega project. Yes. Uh, it's crazy. Crazy amount of investment that's going into it now, the amount of dollars flying in at all it's levels. Sick. Apple's getting That's into sick. it now. Yeah, Microsoft, of course, Google. The names yeah. have already changed. Yeah. So Bard's changed to Gemini and ChatGPT just yeah, released uh, that video thing. What was it called? Yeah. Not Sona, but it's similar. It's something name. like that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, anyway. it's a crazy video. There was I, I read a thing about a guy who was going to start his uh, film studio, like a million dollar, yeah. multi million dollar, ten million dollar film studio, and he decided, well, all AI. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. But interesting thing, last year you and I did a Halloween episode where we asked ChatGPT, or no, it was uh, probably Dolly or something, to make uh, Jack Nicholson a record cover for Jack Nicholson's great. Uh, sorry. Jack Torrance's greatest hits. Right. And it did a pretty convincing job, but like everyone was missing fingers, limbs were floating in midair. It was far from perfect. I just did a proposal, a presentation to a dude a couple of weeks ago. He wanted help making a podcast. And I said, well, listen, I'll do, I'll make your website for you. I'll do all those things. I'll make your podcast if you want. And, uh, but I want to do it. He, he had the idea of creating a barbershop feel. I thought that's really cool. Let's, let's work with that. And so the front page, I needed a picture of a guy in a barbershop chair and it created, so this was mind you through Adobe and their AI is phenomenal. They're doing crazy things with AI like that vocal cleaner upper. That's part of audition. That thing is insane. And I think you introduced me to that, but anyway, so it sent me back a picture of a, of a dude in a barber chair and it, you can't tell it's not a photo, but it says right on it. This is not a photograph. This is AI generated. So it's, it's going in leaps and bounds. Anyway, those are just some thoughts there. I wanted to see if I could find the, uh, the Jack Nicholson, uh, greatest oh, hits. Yeah. Well, it's in the archives. <laughs> we even created a special episode. There that. it is. Yeah. Something like that. There it is. That Jack Torrance's greatest hits. Right. But it's so far from perfect. Like it's at the well, time. This is a year like, ago, right? Holy smokes. Yeah. 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 And, um, and now it's gotten so much better. So the question is, my question, I think is, it's great that we can do this, but why would you want to like that song? It's interesting. It's cool, but who wants to listen to robot generated music? You think that'll be a big deal? You think anyone's going to care? I don't think people actually like the idea of listening to robot generated music. I mean, there are some. There's a band that, that uh, uh, it's totally fake. It's totally AI. I've got it in my bookmarks really? somewhere. Yeah, I didn't get it all together here, but uh, yeah, totally. It's pretty wild. AI generated music, heavy metal does really well with technical and kind of progressive metal. With, uh, can turn on a dime with all the time signatures and all of them. But that, I mean, that, 
that blues track was totally convincing. So was the country track. Like there was nothing wrong with those pieces. Right. The the lyrics are pretty crap. I'll grant Very you crap. that. Very crap. Very crap. But that's more a function of going off road. Like write me a song about my friend, uh, Earl or whatever it was. Those lyrics, are, it's going to be hard to make comfortable lyrics there. But if you gave it a reasonably uh, on the rails theme, like, you know, man versus nature, the, the, the aging process, and of course relationships, it probably will spit out a ton of really good syrupy, gooey stuff that unless you're searching for Leonard Cohen, you'd probably be like, this is a good tune. I want to hear how this plays out. I just yeah. can't say so on LinkedIn when there was a fad for all of two weeks where people were were using AI generated images to accompany their posts. So I write a short form thing, you know, a couple hundred words on whatever, and I would ask uh, ChatGPT make me an image about I don't know a computer monitor catching on fire or going crazy or something. I would create one. So people would post and post and post, but after a while they all started to look the same. So my buddy, Kevin sent me a, a deep fake of Ryan Reynolds today talking about some sort of investment scheme and you should send $250 immediately. And it's like, <laughs> it's good, but it's not like it's not head and shoulders above max headroom which Max Hedrum was not actually digitally generated, but it was made to look like it was. There's still the weird like mouth glitches and the words don't match what the lips are doing, et cetera, et cetera. So to me, it's still not, it's like, oh, this is interesting. And before long, I'm sure it'll get really, really close, but I'm just not buying it yet. I don't know what your experience has been, EB. Yeah, it makes, yeah it's, it's still not 100% believable. We're going to be dealing with that uncanny valley situation. Where as uncanny it, valley? What is that? Uncanny valley means when you have something that looks not real, like a cartoon, something that's mm -hmm. obviously not real. You go, yeah, okay, that's cool. I, I like it. And as it starts to approach reality, getting very close to reality, but still a little bit off, that's the uncanny yeah. valley. Well, can it ever get a hundred percent there? That's my next question to you. See, I, think it'll get there. I think it'll get to where it can fool us. Let's go, let's go back to Microsoft word or actually word perfect, which was the predecessor to word when it came out. And I was around at that time when it came out, people would be like, someday you won't need pen or paper in order to write anymore. You won't want pen or paper. Everything will be done on the computer. I still write on pen and paper. Matter of fact, I write with a fountain pen because I like that mechanical feel. I like the fact that there's some engineering in my hand that another person made and it makes for a more personal experience. You will never get me, even though it's 10 times faster, much easier to organize. Look at the new remarkable two. It's this little tablet that's supposed to feel like paper, act like paper. And it's got all the benefits of being able to create folders, to organize your stuff, to tag things. I don't want one. I like real paper so much better. So 40 years ago, people were like, ah, man, one of these days, one of these days, the pen and paper will be a thing of the past. The newspaper, the magazine, the printed book. And yet, here we are. It's not like a, it's definitely been disrupted, but I wouldn't say it's been displaced. What are your thoughts on that? I used a pen and paper today. Actually, a Sharpie. Yeah. And there you go. two eight and a half by 11s folded in half. I did there you my to-do list in the morning. After That's I was it. eating, I was just like, okay, I got to do this and this and this and this and this. And yeah. And I dragged it around with me and probably just throw it away in the end. So let's get uber philosophical. Is there something then about human communication or the consumption of a piece of art that defies what's observable? Science is interesting, but science deals in trying to explain our universe through things that we can observe. We try a test, we see what happens, we measure, we refine our theories, and then we repeat. But that's all based on things that we can push and have it react. So you press a button and it does something. You, um, you know, you ask a human being a question using certain words, you get a different reaction. But what about the aspects of communication that can't be seen because they either happen so quickly or 
they're sensed almost rather than actually like, I don't plan a micro expression, right? If my eyebrows start wiggling while I'm talking, I don't plan it. I don't choose it. It just right. happens. It's just part of the articulation. So there's, there's something, let's say in the quantum field, for example, in the realm of possibility that transmits in a way that we can't understand. So when you hear something, you'll always go, that's fake. Right. Right. Will we never one hundred percent get to replicate it? Well, I mean, I think to the point, digital audio sounded really, really fake when it was uh, eight bits and exactly. ten kilohertz um, mm -hmm. sampling rate, and now we've got well, whatever. But I think once we hit CD, it then became like with a good, good enough recording, good enough speakers, you could probably fool someone. It's capturing sure. all the available information that our ears can hear. Now, right. when it comes to our eyes, our brains, and uh, other senses, eh, maybe it's not quite there. But I think what, instead of AI just generate, training and generating, training and generating, you can also have a live input at the same time. An interface, if you will, even between your brain mm -hmm. or a microphone. Um mm -hmm. You know what's worth checking out, and I'm going to mention this here. South by Southwest, which happened a few weeks ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. Half of the panel seemed to be about AI, the future of the internet. It was Not very surprised. digitally oriented. This is a keynote uh, while well, an interview with Ray Kurzweil, of uh, course, of Kurzweil Instruments, Keyboards. I still got a K2000R yep. sitting right in front of me. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, of course, predicted the singularity for 2029, at which point the computer would be you know, as smart as the human integrated. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I mean, it's some pretty far out philosophy, but his predictions about the tech Moore's law and so forth, he thinks mm -hmm. we might even be a few years ahead of schedule. Could be. And uh, well worth watching. And there's a couple other keynotes. There was a guy from Patreon, uh, Conte, and he was talking about the importance of building a fan base and deep connections with yes. fans rather than say what the YouTube algorithm is, which is get as much attention as possible. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, and then get kicked off the platform when you say the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, think about the decisions you make when you pick an equalizer to do a job, when you're molding a track sonically, yeah. you know what the tools do and you know what they do, not just from a technical perspective, like, Oh, this has 12 dB of gain per, per band. But you also know emotionally what impact that equalizer makes. When it, for example, when you use a top shelf, does it create a high shelf that sizzles and is sibilant or does it create a high shelf that feels like air? Like we start describing, I think, or in my experience, we, we start describing the impact of the tools that we use in terms of the impact that we feel Yes. primarily by, by hearing it. And so can we teach an algorithm all of that stuff? Isn't that infinitely variable? Like, oh yeah, the top shelf on this has got sheen and sizzle and air, but if you put it on symbols, it doesn't work. Mm. Like to, to what level of precision can we feed these algorithms this information so that it can make great decisions on our behalf? Because, hey, to be honest, fussing with an equalizer for some of us, it's part of the joy, like nothing like messing around with a tool to see if you can get it to do what you create the sound that you hear in your head. But as a working producer, wouldn't mm -hmm. it be great if you could just sit there and go Miley Cyrus and it just makes something sound just like a Miley makes... Cyrus record. You well, know I mean, what I mean? You could train the AI to your actual tastes because I think that's what you're mm -hmm. starting to talk about there is, is taste. Yeah. And that yeah. comes from experience. That comes from trying a million different EQs on a million different settings, a million different projects. And yeah. saying, this is what I like, or this is what this particular piece of music needs. This is what this track yeah. needs. Now, can exactly. the AI get there? I don't know. It could certainly analyze what 500 engineers did and find the median. For sure. Uh, it's good with that. And you could certainly pers have your own personal AI. I could envision that in the future to replicate the things that you do yes yeah so, see right now if if i use chat gbt to create something like uh, some copy or an article a blog article i have to spend so much time teaching it how to think 
that by the time I've done all the training, I might as well have just written the article myself. And you'd say, yeah, but you only have to do that once. But yeah, I never write the same article twice though. Mm. Right? Like the conclusion's always different. The, the concept of the piece, the theme of the piece will always be a little bit different and a little bit experimental. So do I want a machine that generates stuff kind of in my voice? I don't know if I want that. Like, it's really great for running through. I, I was doing a, a project for a team a while ago, and I was trying to show them how to look at some metrics. And I wrote to chat GBT, hey, can you make me an Excel file that has the following columns and the following rows and fill it with the following data and then make a chart? And it did. Like, it just does everything perfectly. It's insane how good it is. There's, there's a new one, the codes. Uh, oh, for sure. Forgot the name. For sure. It's like Devin. how much longer? D-E-V-A-N. It writes yeah. code. It debugs yeah. code. For sure. And it's how much longer are developers going to be needed in the, in the volume and in the capacity that they're needed today? Interesting question. Yeah. It's, as far as menial tasks go, stuff that just takes mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And stuff that even takes a little bit of discernment, which AI yeah, can provide that. It can certainly categorize things. This is blue. Right. This is green. This is, like, sort all the balls into the different AIs. Yes. Gonna, it, that, the amount of labor that's going to save. Yeah. Um, or displace, depending on what angle yeah. you, you want to look at. That is incredible. What I'm interested in right now, before we get to the point where, if we get to the point, where it's like, yeah, just make me a movie. Just uh, just make me an album about this, mm -hmm. and it sounds like this. I'm enjoying giving AI human input and then manipulating it. And I'll show mm -hmm. you uh, some examples. There's a website called kits.ai, and I'll see if I have it here. I do. Kits.ai. You can upload your voice. You mm. singing in your style with your inflections, your pitch, the rhythm, and you can turn it into another voice or another instrument, a guitar solo, saxophone. I played right. with this. Now, let me just, mm. um, without logging in, let me see if I can find. Oops. Sorry there. Okay, so here's my original singing. Always alive. Mm -hmm. Always alive. And we'll always survive. And so on the site, what you do is you load up different models, male mm -hmm. rock, male R&B, female pop, operatic, jazzy. There's 30, 40, mm -hmm. 50 of them. I, I don't know. A lot. Here's one of them. Always alive. Always alive. And who are Ways survive. And oh, maybe that was too poppy or something. Let's try this one. Always alive. You can change the key too, by the way, and do a bunch of other things. Always alive. And who are Right, so you can change it to a, a female voice, a different style, a totally different mm -hmm. person. It's crazy, yeah. Right, yeah. And that I think so, is what I'm trying to talk about when I'm saying you give AI that human input. You know, you use AI for the manipulation. Yeah, you know, it's the same way cool. motion capture has already worked in in movies and stuff. For sure, for sure. I was wondering about something. I kind of lost my train of thought there, but 
It was about replacing people. So one of the dangers of AI is that we'll say, hey, look how much less work you have to do now in a day because, because of this technology. My fear is, of course, that the benefit of that will accrue back to the company, not to the worker. Meaning you no longer have to work eight hour days because you can do six hours of that work in about five minutes using AI. Uh -uh. That's going to be like, okay, you have six hours of bandwidth. Here's a whole bunch more stuff to do. <clears throat> Whether we consider that right or wrong, here's my another philosophical question for you. Part of the joy of making a song is what my songwriting coach calls wrestling with finishing. So you start out with a riff or a concept or a line. Now you got to get it to the finish line. It has to be a finished piece with maybe an A section, a B section, maybe a bridge, etc. The lyric has to go somewhere. All of that, unless you're someone like, you know, Bob Dylan was known to be able to rip a song out in five or 10 minutes. But unless you're like that, you have to work with stuff. You have to try and make sense of a chord progression by using or manipulating the melody and testing different things until you find something that works. So two chords that don't want to go together can suddenly go together if you're willing to play with the melody long enough. But that's a very human effort. Now, muscle doesn't grow unless you tear it. So there's something about the human condition that struggle defines us. And if there's no longer a struggle to writing music, two things happen. It becomes worthless because there was no emotional investment. There was no physical labor. But number two, we're also going to produce a poop ton more of it, which means there's going to be even more noise than there is today. And it's going to get harder for talented people. Oh, yeah, better. exponentially more, I think. Right? So I'm seeing, does anyone here posting? Let me just take a quick look. I don't think we have any, this time of night, we probably don't have anyone um, commenting, but I'd be interested to hear what the crowd thinks about that and maybe some future comments. Is this good? Is this bad? Is this, <clears throat> is this the undeniable future? Or is this the kind of thing that will balloon during this crazy prospecting phase for the next three months or three years and eventually we'll all look back and go, yeah, we shouldn't have done that. Like if you bought NFTs, I feel bad for you. Because you probably spent, <laughs> I don't know, somebody spent like six figures on Mark Cuban's first tweet. It's like, why? Why don't you just screen grab it? Save it in your photos. It's like, no, no, no. I have the original tweet. What's the original tweet? Like, it's not like you have the oil from his fingers or something as he was typing it. What, what do you mean by original tweet? I have the original copy of the tweet. Like, I still can't make sense of how people thought to invest money in that. Do you think that some of this AI stuff... We're going to look back and go, yeah, we created a bit of a problem here. Like, look at social media. Look at the, the interference in our democracy that it's created. Look at the tribalism and divisiveness that it's created. Look at the addictions that it's created. If we were to look back and see the moment when Facebook was first created, would we let Mark Zuckerberg go ahead or would we unplug his computer? Mm. Interesting question. Super qu good question. And given the extreme rate of development that's happening the, the speed of it all how good it's getting right? how quickly the so sheer Paul amount of, of effort capital um uh, technology i mean there's new chips nvidia's got a new chip that's specifically for ai it's it's going to be huge yeah. it's going to revolutionize the amount of um uh, parameters mm -hmm. uh, that the models can do there's uh Great video that I think is worth watching for anyone watching. Sure. Uh, Peter Diamandis podcast. Uh, and tech guy. I mean, he'll, he's something, he'll have guys like Elon Musk and Peter Thiel on his show. This guy just left. He was uh, head of Stability yes. AI. And the reason he's yep. leaving is because he doesn't want it to be strictly in the hands of corporations. He doesn't want it to be in the hands of a market. Zuckerberg, he wants the individuals to be empowered, countries to be empowered, because there's two ways, according to him, that this can go, mm -hmm. where it's going to be available to everybody or it's going to control everybody. Yeah. And so that is well worth watching that video. 
I'm going to throw up a comment from Paul who just wrote, it's nice to know or at least believe that the music I'm listening to is created by someone, physically created, with human imperfections. For my own music creation, self-accomplishment is more rewarding. I think so too. It's like we talked about muscle doesn't grow unless you tear it. We do this thing because we want to grow by contributing art, by making art. And so when we sit down and we're curious about a plugin or curious about a piece of gear or curious about a recording technique, that's what makes the thing worth pursuing to just give me a set of keys and say, Hey, look, type in your dream desires and the genie in the bottle will give, will grant your wishes. I'm not sure that's what I got in it for. So I'm not sure if that will ever resonate with me. And you might say, well, yeah, but you're old, you know, you're old school thinker, all that kind of stuff. But today's generation, they're going to love this. Will they? What's to love? What is it? <laughs> what is it specifically that well, would make someone listen questions. to? Yeah, but that's kind of what I wanted. That that's what I want to do mission. with this episode. There's, yeah. I'll I'll look for it. Anybody who knows the Ten Percent Happier podcast, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they just released one, and it was about fopo, fear of other people's opinions. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> the difference between <laughs> yep. caring about what po- people think or caring your entire life around what people mm-hmm. think and putting on a performance for people. And it talks about high performance people in positions, and that there's a difference between performance driven mm-hmm. and mission driven. Yes, mission driven can actually result in higher performance as well. It has to. So I do high performance coaching for teams and for executives. And I was, I learned up by, by studying and going through programs run by ex Navy SEALs. And I asked the question, why, why are you guys in an environment where you can't ever fail? It is always high stakes, but you always manage to succeed somehow. How do you think differently and do differently? And the answer to that question, surprisingly is number one, uh, your mission. Like you don't jump on a perfectly jump out of a perfectly good airplane or throw yourself on a grenade, knowing that you're going to die so that you can save four other people. Unless you are driven by a highly emotional, compelling goal, like democracy, like freedom, like the preservation of our way of life. So that's part one, but part two is service. Right. With service, when you identify, you understand who it is that you serve, why you serve them, and why you care, then you can motivate other people even in the worst times. Because the other thing you mentioned, which was um, uh, compensation or um, I can't remember how you put it. Like uh, performance driven versus mission driven? Performance driven. Yeah. If the money goes away, if you have a bad quarter or a bad year, what do you, what, what carries you through? What keeps you from quitting? How do you get through the dark night of the soul? If all you have driving you is performance and the performance disappears. So a lot of people in my industry, for example, people who have been in the tech industry for years have seen the crests and falls of certain kinds of skills being in very high demand, paying lots of money. When the money goes away, because it's no longer commodity pricing. Do you stay in the industry or was it only about the money? So I I agree with you. I think that if you're in this business for the right reasons, you do it because you love not just the music, but because you love the discovery, you love the quest. And so things like a piece of gear will be endlessly fascinating to you. But again, if you just push a button and the thing that you're envisioning is just created, is that still art, right? My wife is an art teacher. She has this discussion with every class at the beginning of every year. What is art? If I take a photo of a cat turd, is that art? What's your definition? What's your description? <laughs> okay. Marcel Duchamp with the yeah, urinals with the and the toilets. Found, and the, yeah. found objects, yeah. And so the answer is always, I asked her, I said, if an AI robot completely creates a piece of art, is it still art? And she said, no, a human has to be involved in its creation or it's not art by the definition of the term art. Uh, Is 
just interesting. Oh, and, and by the way, here's another issue. If you create music using one of these tools, you do not own the intellectual property or the copyright. Well, that's no mistake. something we're, we, we're going to get to as well, because that is a whole can of worms. Yeah. And it's yeah. not looking If you don't good. own it, then you can't sell it. You can't grant it the license uh, of a creation to another artist or another person. And if all of this AI stuff was learned on, you know, uh, a vocal line that James Hetfield sang on the black album. Yeah. All the lines then, he sang on all the albums. Yeah. You know, you st- then you the stole artists. it from them. Yeah, yeah. You stole it from them. I was and watching. now you have a lawsuit kind of situation. <clears throat> it's, there are. And that's, that's what I want to get to. Uh, but even before that, I was watching, I, I was talking about the new Blackwell NVIDIA chip and mm-hmm. the keynote address was like, AI is going places and we've got to train massive amounts for this AI and it's going to be doing video and we're, it needs a lot of video, all the videos. All the video, yep. No, NVIDIA is a chip <laughs> manufacturer. But who yeah. out there is going to go and get all the videos? And they're, they're going to have permission for all the <laughs> videos. It just seems a little, it came off as a little entitled when I when I heard that line. Yeah. And just like you said, you don't know the rights. If you did what I did on that, that example back there where I uploaded my voice, mm-hmm. they've now got my voice for training. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> here's a list that I... I it's from March 11th, so not that long ago. There's a list of the running loose key AI lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> NVIDIA Corp on the receiving end. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is that about? Protected books. Okay. Yeah. Raw Story, that's a news organization media. The Intercept, also a news organization. Main sequence. Well, what is that? George Carlin's voice. They took George Carlin's mm. voice and they. I did heard a about thing. this one. Yeah. Yep. There he is Bass Bands. I know the New York Times. There's New York Times. Yeah. Anyway, the uh, the Piper's coming, mm-hmm. and this is going to require a revamp of the laws. I think. I, I don't know if it will be possible just to write up contracts. I, I know that AI and digital generation was part of when, if you remember when the actors went on strike and yes. um, that was huge. It was rights to likeness where it's mm-hmm. like, you're not going to hire me for one hour to get my face, to get my voice and then yes. use that to generate the rest of the movie. Exactly. Which is, I mean, putting, George, yeah. George McFly and Back to the Future had the same problem. They made the molds of uh, like a prosthetic for his face to make him look old in the first movie. And then he didn't want to do the second and third movies for the same amount of money, or maybe it was a creative difference. So he decided not to do it. So what they did was they took those molds, the inside of the molds and recast a, um, basically a, a model of his head. And so they put that on another actor. It still didn't look great, but the point is, it was his likeness. And he sued, and I think he won. I think he was successful. Excellent. So, yeah. That's what I like to hear. Because but the now, attitude right now is is the same as Web 2.0. It's like it's yeah. user-generated content, which we uh, can use however we want to, for advertising. Right. Uh, it's to sell to governments in case they yeah. want to know what you were doing. Exactly. And how do we get out of that? And I love that story about the guy that uh, quit because that's what he doesn't want to see this time around. He saw he saw the whole Web 2.0 thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that, if that happens with AI, that's disastrous for the human race. Maybe good for like we, it's, four people on top. And these are all mistakes we've made in the past. We are perfectly capable of avoiding disaster here if the will exists, but there's such a prospector mentality right now. It's like money, 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 money. And hey, money is great. You can't operate without money. And if you invent something, you deserve to profit from it, but yes. not at any and not at any cost. So we'll see how this plays out. Do you have more stuff you wanted to share or is it a t- good time to wrap up? Oh, I, I want to wrap up soon, but two other okay. sites... You can check out 
So actually, I'll, I'll go through. Here we go. Okay, so Tonex, the amplifiers, mm -hmm. kits.ai, upload your voice, change it into something else. Ripex DAW. This lets you separate music from the drums, from the bass, from the other things. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. It does it really well. Also, if you use Audacity, which is the free DAW, there are now these kinds of AI tools available for free in Audacity. Maybe we'll put a link below. Okay, so Tonex, Topaz Labs. This is for image mm. enhancement and restoration. I use this all the time. In fact, the thumbnail of this video was generated with uh, Bing AI, which is the newer oh, wow. version of Dolly. And then I ran it through Topaz to get a bit more resolution, a bit more size nice. out of it. And Incredible. Ace Studio. Okay, this is where you can design vocal parts. You can put Ooh. in MIDI notes, or you can sing, or you can play an instrument. Once it gets the notes, you can choose a singer and type the words that it will sing. <laughs> and you can layer, you can do harmonies. It's That's wonderful. Crazy. There are videos online on YouTube yeah. that you can see people go through the process. I didn't want to leave without mentioning that. But I think that's uh, that's pretty good, you know? Yep. One yeah, thing that I forgot to do, every time we stream live, it's just so uh, distracting. Every time you come in here, you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me. <laughs> so on a, on a, a related but not fully similar note the uh, joe flaherty passed away today so joe flaherty was no. if you're yeah if you're canadian like us you would know joe from his very early days on a little program called sctv that used to run on city tv when it f pretty much within the first five years of the channel's existence and i grew up on that comedy but you would know joe from freaks and geeks you would know joe from happy gilmore and a couple of other shows he was a really gifted writer and performer he just never hit the same kind of fame level as people like Eugene Levy, John Candy, Martin Short, who were also in that same troupe. Anyway, he was 82, which is a pretty good run, but but a good example of what artistry used to look like. Writing comedy is not a hack job, man. It is a real grind. And if you've ever done it, you'll know that it's a process, and that process is grueling, and it's a lot of building up and burning down and starting over and and experimenting with things to see what works and it's a lot of failures and a lot of crickets and a lot of rooms before you hit something that works and that's one of those things that i wonder can ai really replace so just some food for thought that has nothing to do with plugins that has nothing to do with you know acoustica and universal audio but everything to do with the craft that we love so i'm sure we'll do this again talk about it more thanks for those who we're watching and who chimed in with comments. We appreciate you guys so much. We love doing this. And if, yeah, that's awesome. AI, if AI could create a mixer assist episode, would you watch it? You'd watch it once. <laughs> do, would you, you want to watch it? Would you keep subscribing? Something to think about. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, I'll leave you one deep thought. And I was thinking when we look at a photo or a movie or a painting or a sculpture, a piece of art, or listen to music, or read some poetry, or a novel. We are spending time in a person's head, or maybe a group of people, but you're spending time in someone else's head. And when we listen to AI-generated art, which head would that be? Right. Another person who spent a lot of time in someone else's head was Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll leave you with that one. Ah, <laughs> uh, where are we? What are we doing here? Just got to make one final error before uh, we sign off. <laughs> Anytime, <laughs> anywhere, <laughs> anywhere. Nice. <laughs> Right on. Thanks, everybody. All right, dude. Uh, we're going to try to stream some more because it's great. We got a few people watching, got a comment, and that's just, that's just special. It is. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. See you in the next one.
See you next time on The Mixer System. Yeah, 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 yeah.